Hello, welcome back to Going Walkabout. Today I'm going to share with you some progress I'm making in my new post view in Swift UI. I'm slowly rewriting my application in Swift UI. I do that when there's a need for new functionality or features. Now, one of the things I want to implement is uh, collaborators. I've mentioned that before. And in order to do that, I want to change some in my posts, the way the posts are presented. Because currently you cannot see who created the post and that's necessary when you have collaborators. Now, I also want to make the application less complex. So I want to remove an additional layer or an additional view to present a view. Now, before I'm going to explain what I'm doing in Swift UI, let's first look here at the simulator, what I have currently. So this is the normal application as it is today. We have here our test strip. And if I zoom in, now I can scroll to post, but let's take a little bit more interesting post. Here you can see one. I show here the time, the location where it is. I have options to do something with this if you're the owner. And I can zoom into a next page where I see a little map and I see all the pictures and somewhere the text on top. Now, this doesn't make really sense. It's not very logical. And there's one more thing. If I click here, I can see the image and I can go through and I can close them and I can go back. Now, there's a few things to remember here. If we look at this first post, we see this mosaic of uh, images. And when an image is created or uploaded by the user, I always keep track of the aspect ratio and I want to show them here in the correct aspect ratio. So I have in this case three images. So it's an odd number. I show the first one on full width and the other one I calculate the correct width of each image so it fits the screen while protecting the um, uh, aspect ratio. And here below I show the text. Now, if it's a long text, I show long text. If it's short, so I also want to make some changes there. But this is the current situation. A, this is what I call my post view. I click, I go to a detailed view with all the images on maximum size and I can click on an image and here I can do some pinch and zoom like this. And that's about it that I can do here to continue. Now. This is what I'm rewriting currently in Swift UI. And yes, it's the whole trip view, but other parts like the header, the map, everything that will come later. For now, I just focus on this trip view. So let's go and have a look what I've been doing so far in Swift UI. Remember my test data here where I have uh, some test posts from the last time and I have my post view. Now it's already rendering the preview and we can see here that now on top I have a user with an avatar, the name and the location and I put the time. And this is also the weather. And a long time ago I already implemented that you could record weather when you write a post, the current weather because often people ask you later after the trip, how was the weather, blah, blah, blah. And now you can remember that or at least store it with the post you created. But I had no way to present that. So now I'm presenting that here with a symbol, you know, sunny in this case, the temperature and that it was a clear sky. And here I have my buttons not implemented yet to do actions. And this is the mosaic of the images. Now this isn't full width, but that is uh, just something here in my preview. It is all right, but I'll show you that also later. But I need to calculate how to lay out this, and I have this here. And I can also go to another post, yeah, as I already demoed another time. Now, you see here the image width is not correct, but the actual reason is because the view cannot uh, go bigger than the screen. So it squashes everything inside the screen. But once I put this post into a list, it will render correctly, as I'll uh, show uh, also in the preview of my list. And I can also go to another one that uh, oh, we also saw this one already, this one then, where it looks quite nice, etc. And here we also see we have text, currently show three lines, and I can expand that and I show less. But that is a topic of probably a separate video because I'm not happy with the behavior and the implementation of that part, so I'm not ready to share that yet. Now, this is the view. So if we look here in my uh, post view, yeah, I always have a view model. This is my typical behavior that business logic goes into a view model. So I have a view model here and this view model 
needs to keep track of some published variables and that has to do with showing the images. Remember, in the first one we had the post view, then we went to the details and from the details we can show the images, but now I want to show the images directly from the uh, post view. Initialize, I set the post, I need to calculate the media sizes. And what I do here, this calculates a set of media sizes that takes into consideration whether I have an odd or even number of images, and then it calculates the width factor so that later in my view, here in my view where I render the images, I render here my images, I go through all my uh, view model count. Yeah, there's the number of images. If it's an uh, odd number, I show the first one. And else, I calculate the left and the right, and I set the width of the media sizes. And this way, it's very easy because I know the aspect ratios. I can go through the images, calculate a set of uh, sizes, and then render it here on the screen based on what I calculated here. Now, this is currently for this particular part of the view. The only thing I need to do in my view model. But I also have implemented the way that I can click here and now I can see my images. I can go browse through the images. I can actually double click and zoom, double click, zoom out. I can close it. I can click and I can start scrolling and you see it becomes transparent and it will close. Oops. I can go here. Uh, I don't have it correctly yet that the correct image is displayed, but I can move this away or to the bottom, both sides, it is the same. And the way I had to do that, or does it right now, and I also show ain't done yet, but that's something I have an overlay, and in that overlay I show my post media viewer. Now let's go to the post media viewer, and or actually my post media viewer gets passed in the view model of the post. And in this uh, situation, I chose not to create a new view model and initialize that because they're very related. It both needs the post with the li list of uh, images and the aspect ratios and everything I need there to display it. So I pass from here where I have my view model initialized in my post view, I pass it on to the post media viewer to do the business logic of that viewer. Now let's go into that viewer. And that viewer, that is a tab view that is for these buttons. Inside the tab, I go through my media, I show my media, and here I have a scale effect and an offset, and in this case for the magnification, so for the double click and for the pinch and zoom, I have a gesture that will then recalculate my image scale, and it will set the image scale uh, here on the correct value uh, to do that. And that is with the state variable. I didn't put that into my uh, view model. No, not necessary to do because it's very local to what I've done here. But for my dragging, then I have an overlay for showing this button. And with the button, I can show, uh, toggle it. So this is part of my view model, whether the um, uh, image viewer is shown or not, so I can close it again. And there's some layout with that with that button that I'm gonna change because it doesn't fit my design at the moment. I set the frame and here I also have a gesture for dragging. But for the dragging, I was experiencing some problems that I was not allowed to change the view while rendering the view. The, the, iOS, um, the Xcode 14 warning, and one of the solution is to move everything that is related to updating these variables into an observable object. My view model is an observable object, so that's why I move this all into my view model. So in my view model, I have an on-drag change and an on-drag end that get passed in the value. Let's go to my view model. So if the on-drag change, I calculate the opacity, so uh, well, I calculate two things, the offset, so it's the location of the image, where to show it when you drag it around, and second, based on that position, the opacity of the um, layer behind, that I can show you here, that's the opacity of this color black, with the opacity, so that if I move this, see, it gets less black. Now, this is in preview, there's nothing behind, but you see it goes to white. And I also, in my view model, have the on drag end, and the drag end will again yeah, calculate the offset, or when you stop dragging, it will either 
go back to the position where you were. So if I if I move this and I stop, it moves back to the original position. And if I move far enough, it will close it. Now, this is the preview. I cannot close it, but that's what it is doing. So if we look at that from the post view, we have the view. I can click. And now you see the opacity. I can go through and it closes and it is done. And I all did all my logic again into functions in my view model used from the media viewer. And the media viewer will then update here for the scaling we, we had here in the image scale. But the image offset here is my view model image offset and height. So that makes uh, uh, sure that it's shown in the correct uh, situation. And well, the closing is on the drag end here. That will just set my show media viewer that is in my view model already to close. And that's why it's closing if you drag it far up or far down. And that all works, but it doesn't work perfectly. And I'll also show you um, the work I still need to do to make it uh, perfect. Um, let's go to my post list. And this is actually a list where I put uh, a scroll view with my geometry reader because I need the width of the screen that I pass into my view model of my uh, post view. And I have a list with post views and I can go through here. Now you see now it renders correctly. It has the correct width and the post, they actually look correct. Now this is still an issue with my expandable text. It's in the middle, shouldn't be, but also this will expand it and you can continue scrolling and it is all pretty neat and I can show this now. But now let's go into some of the issues I am having with my viewer. If I click my viewer here, I see there's still something here. It's not full screen and it doesn't drag because it's in the scroll view and I'm having a problem here. I can close it, but if I go to another post uh, like this one, it again doesn't show correctly. And on the last one, it's even worse because it only takes a small part of the screen. And that is because that overlay is defined on the post view and that post view takes a certain amount of space that is not enough to show it completely. Now I do have a preliminary solution or something that uh, works. I was experimenting with my full cover, but that has some other issues. So now let's go to the list. Well, we can show, try to show it here. Here it shows you only difference is you see it now popping up from the bottom. It closes, but this one is an issue that the opacity doesn't work because apparently the uh, full screen cover doesn't have a transparent background and I need to figure out how to make that transparent. But let's see how that works in the list. There we have the list. If I click now, it is full screen. I can go through. It actually closes again. See, so the logic is there. Let's go to the last one where we had a problem that it wasn't big enough. Now it works. So this is an improvement in terms of showing the images, but it's not yet an improvement in terms of showing the opacity that you can look through and that looks nice. So I need to see if there's a way to make that uh, full screen cover, uh, giving it a transparent background. And if I can do that, that's probably the way I will continue. So let's slowly recap. What have I done in my post? I have added the user with the name and the location where it happened. I added the weather and I added here my expandable text. And this way, now I have a much more uh, fluid overview. I don't need to go into the details to see the images uh, full screen. I can do it directly. The only thing I'm missing is that little map I had with the old one, but I have a little bit of a different idea that we can go from the location directly into a uh, mapping ter uh, territory and, and show how that is done. So this is my progress on the post view. I really enjoy working in this Swift UI. It's different. I like doing it. It's easier to do than uh, writing storyboards or writing the layout from code. Now, of course, it's new, so it takes more time. But eventually, conceptually, I like the idea. It fits me and uh, I will continue working on a Swift UI. And I will, of course, also continue sharing progress and things I find and that I challenge uh, into the future. Now, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, subscribe anyway, because the next one might be better for you. I well, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.